What's going, y'all? It's your boy, Joaquin Alexander, and this is the gold standard. This is one of one. And my guest today, to the left of me, for the visuals as well, is Mr. Marcus Rhodes. He is the founder, and he started ARX Professional Air Duct and, Cl and Air Solutions. Since, yep. Correct? Let's get right into it. So, thank you for coming on, Marcus. Yes, yes, man. I'm glad to be here. Um, So, how do we meet? Uh, let, Let's just kind of... I, I needed my air ducts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I hadn't been clean in about 30 years. And, like, no lie. So, as the people that are watching on live and or they're going to watch this on or listen on, on this in the future, if you don't have your air ducts cleaned and you're always sneezing, or if you have dogs, cats, and you have children, um, the house that I live in uh, was built in the 60s. So, that's quite a long time. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty old. And I needed my air ducts clean, and then I saw your ad on Facebook. Yep. Which, for our young entrepreneurs, Facebook is huge, you yep. know. And I called Marcus, came right away the next day, gave me a free consultation. This man does free consultations for people, you know, time is money, but that's huge, you know. And he came in, he, he uh, get my little Italian going, bada boom, bada bing, kind of just sized it up, and he showed me. Your boy got a little emotional because I knew what was already in there was in there, and that's what I was. That's what my family's been breathing in for thirty years. Yep. And it can make you sick. It can make you. I, I'm not sure if it could kill you. Yeah, I wouldn't say just to kind of touch on that a little bit. I wouldn't say like it could kill you. Uh, what what we have started to find and what we're gonna start doing in 2020 is a lot of people um don't realize if your home is built. I want to say between, you know, if you got a home that's built in the 50s up to about the 70s or the 80s, you could still have asbestos in your home. So, you know, part of these consultations is to come out, uh, find out, you know, what's in your ducts and find out are any of these particulars in there harmful. Um, in that case, you know, we'll send it um, the the particles off and get them tested for asbestos. Uh, definitely one of those things that you don't want to be breathing in. And when uh, he came through the house and he cleaned uh, cleaned the vents, I mean, y'all, y'all gotta understand. Um, me growing up was just by myself, uh, and then three younger siblings. Um, I had a dog once uh, that lived in the house that I gave to my sibling, and. It was kind of like a, a pressure that was taken off me, even though there's more work needed to be done to the house. And that's how me and Marcus got connected. And this man is trying to, is making moves, not trying, making moves. And I am as well. And then we just kind of like two sides of the same coin. So I needed somebody big time on my, as my first guest. And um, I mean, I'm, I'm, thank you for being here, man. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, basically, today we're going to be speaking a little bit about his industry and just entrepreneurship. Uh, entrepreneurship is something in this country that we need more of. We need Definitely. employers, yep. not employees. Employees, exactly. You need to have an employer mind frame. <clears throat> so it doesn't matter if you are 18 years old or if you're 50 and you're wanting to go back to school. You don't want, basically, right now in our educational system in this country, is teaching you to become a drone, an employee. Yep. Um, you have, you know, the prison, the pipeline thing going on in, in the black and brown community, but we're going to, we'll talk about that another day. Right now, I want to empower all my, my gente. Uh, it doesn't matter if you, if hablas español or here, you know what I mean? We in Texas, so, you know, exactly. we got a lot of Mexicans, exactly. you know, but, um, you don't have to sell dope. You don't nope. have to, uh, shake that ass ladies, um, uh, own the strip club, you know, don't be the ones on working on the pole. So what do you what are your thoughts, man? What what do you what are your thoughts on the uh, state of entrepreneurs? Uh, um, right now? I think that right now in the state of entrepreneurship, man, I think creators are the new business model. Um, I see like I know we're on Facebook Live right now. I see uh one of my you know classmates and a uh, person I would call a, a best friend, uh, Edlin Acuna. They have a CBD shop that okay. they just bring in. Uh, to Tyler, Texas. Um, also, they have, and you have to bring her on okay. and talk more in, in depth about what she's doing. But she also, uh, they deal with the coffee 
and okay. you being from Mexico, yeah, and yeah, yeah, she's yeah. Hispanic as well, <laughs> right, right, you know, right, right, right. she um actually started her business kind of how I started mine. Back was against the wall, wanted to change. So she flew to Mexico, made some connections with family members, and now she has a pipeline between Mexico okay. and, and, you know, East Texas uh, bringing this specialized coffee. So... I, I look I'm at a big people. Coffee drinker, man. Hey, exactly. <laughs> you know, and a, and a lot of people are, and in you know, in entrepreneurship, I say if you look right now, everything is starting with the creators. I mean, right, you look right, at right. art. You know, artists now have a platform like they never had before. Right. Um, you have people who are in video that never have a platform. Um, everything that was on un, an unorthodox way to make a living, yeah. you know, between the 80s and the early 2000s, right, right, right. you know, that was shunned upon because yes. you need to work in the factory, you need to work in the industry. Now these are the leaders again. Yeah. And, you know, I, I say all, all the time, you know, um, necessity is the father of invention. It is. Um, and yeah, yeah. I think for once, the, the people now are like, hey, look, like we're obviously not getting anywhere you know, selling our dreams away to work for a system. Um, and I don't want anybody to think that, like, hey, this guy is anti-Semitic. He don't believe in working for anybody. No, I got my start working for people. Right. You know, I got my start working for $5.15 an hour washing cars at a dealership. You know, so I had to learn how to follow to learn how to lead. Right. And anybody who wants to go in business Get in a business and become a student of business. Right. And you soak like, it all in. soak it all in. Right. The the things that they're doing right, the things that they're doing wrong. Like, you can't work a job and then criticize your boss if you're not looking at a way to do it better. So every business that I work for, I was a student. Like, I called it getting a paid education. Right. Like, they're paying me to learn a trade. They're paying me to learn how to work um, and, and operate in their business, soak everything up. So, you know, I think right now, embrace creativity, uh, embrace your dreams right now, it's paying off. And entrepreneurs have so many platforms. You know, the giants are gonna, are gonna fall. The, the Giants can't stay on top forever. No. And what Exactly. And right now, the world is, is starting to innovate again, bro. Like, so when you look at Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, yeah. these are all platforms get based for entrepreneurs. Like, exactly. so if you can't make it now, then you can't make it. You get what I'm saying? Right, right. And, and I kind of want to, like, touch base. You, you're talking about this system. So... A lot. My first job was uh, McDonald's. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with McDonald's. Absolutely you not. You have money coming in. Exactly. Let me let me let me shout out to uh, Jamie Lydia, aka Debo. He was a guest on uh, Odo Nation on my YouTube channel. Like, share, and subscribe. Um, he said it best. I mean, this dude is is gold, man. With yeah. his knowledge yeah. uh, of, he basically said, take the same transition, the the knowledge. From the streets, yeah, and put it into corporate America. Exactly, exactly. So know your product, know your, uh, you know, because you don't, you might yeah. need real money if you ain't got no real money, no bond money, no lawyer money. Yeah. Then what are you doing? So when I bring up McDonald's, I know people that worked there for four years and now are making them maybe about sixty k because they're like yeah. GMs. Exactly, and exactly. I would and, and, rather make sixty k than making yeah. no fucking money. You know but what I mean? but you know what though, I I never knock nobody's nobody's grind. Right. You know everybody has to start somewhere, and like what what I'll tell anybody, if you can work at McDonald's right and make sixty k a year, then you can work anywhere. Right. Like, but I'm gonna tell you what you have to discover in working for a place like McDonald's. Right. McDonald's is a revolving door. It is. So if you stick around long enough, right. 
Right. You're going to rise to the top. If you come to work every day, you work hard, you're dedicated, you're highly motivated. When everybody else is on smoke breaks and won't come back to work on time, if you're where you need to be doing what you're supposed to do, the cream is going to rise to the top. Exactly. Uh, so, no, like, I wouldn't, like... This is what I don't want people to think when we're when you know we're talking about entrepreneurship. At one point in my career, I'm going to have people who work for me. Exactly. And there are some people who will be okay with working for me. But what we have to change is I want those people to be to feel the most needed. Yes. I want them to be the most appreciated and I want them to be the most taken care of. Right. Because what we have to understand as business owners, as entrepreneurs, as managers, as supervisors, without the the worker ant is the most important part right. of the colony, bro. Right, 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 right. Like and sometimes they all serve the queen. Exactly. They all have a role. Exactly. That the queen without the worker ant is nothing. She has nothing to be a queen over. Nah. So I <laughs> like that's, I don't want analogy. anybody to think that we're downing people who work for a living. That's not what I'm that's not what we're here to do. Like I just want you to know that if there's anything, if you have a dream to work in corporate America, if you have a dream to go from a bank teller to a, a loan originator, like don't die on that dream. But also, we want you to know that, look, beyond just being a bank teller or a loan originator, like, it is a possibility that you can have your own bank. Right. Like, I don't want anybody to it's limit. It's not easy. Exactly. Nothing, I don't want. Nothing in life that is worthwhile. <laughs> it's it's going to come easy. What this man is doing, he started a business. For all my business owners, this is just a little, this a little jewel. If you start a business in the fourth quarter, expect adversity. Yes, definitely. But you're going to rise out of the ashes because we're sitting here speaking on the business model is changing. It's changing. So if McDonald's is a revolving door, soak up what you can, uh, make these connections. Maybe you and one of the guys that make fries or flips the burgers or the maintenance guy, maybe y'all go make your own Man, buy burgers. a food truck. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, buy right. a food truck. Be mobile. Exactly. Buy a food truck. Like, you don't even have to go in debt buying an establishment where you owe rent every month. Right. Stay at McDonald's. Save your money. Put your money away. Get a team. Get somebody that you can grind with, that you can trust. And if y'all are good at making these burgers that McDonald's don't want to put on the menu, exactly. like, go uh, get your own food <laughs> truck I, I don't and burgers, go man. sell burgers and fries and live your dream. Um, Like, I can't emphasize that enough. Like, you can be comfortable working with somebody else for somebody else. And in some cases, bro, it's easier. Right. You know, you can get to that 100K. The one thing I don't want people to think about business is easy. If you work for somebody, right, and let's say you go back to school, get a master's degree, a PhD, and they put you at a hundred and something K a year salary, mm -hmm. you know that unless you get fired, you can get that hundred K hundred K salary year after year after right. year after year. Whereas a business owner, if you make a hundred K this year, I call it hero to zero. If you make a hundred K this year, now you gotta start over for the next year from yeah. ground zero, right. nothing, right. and try to get 100K again or try to get 200K the next mm -hmm. year. And the the difference is between working for somebody else and being a business owner is, is this one thing. If I want to make 100K, right. I have to work like I'm trying to make 500K. Right, right, right. If I'm trying to make $250,000 yeah, a year, now I have to work like I'm trying to make a million dollars a year. And, and that's the, the <clears throat> a lot of people, um, that's the the hustle that's in you. So, yeah. uh, we're, you're from Marshall. Yeah. Definitely. I'm from Tyler. East Texas, 903, right? Yep. So, I have this community, uh, like, family in me, you know, uh, family is very important. We're Definitely. both parents, you know. Uh, shout out to your little girl. Shout out to yeah, my kids. Yeah. You know what I mean. But if you come from a 
a well established well, I wouldn't say well established, but like a grounded family, yeah, you already have a head start because you already have the discipline and the love. Exactly. Whereas there's people that don't have that. And if you live in a in a very rural area here in East Texas, there's not a lot of opportunity. No, no, man, it's not. It's, and it's really not. You got to find a need. Yeah. Right? So what's out here? We got a lot of yards, trees. So maybe uh, if you're 18 years old and you're listening to this or 14 years old and you want to make some money, if you're in Longview, Marshall, Texarkana, Lufkin, it doesn't matter where you are in this country. Yeah. Pick up a, a vacuum. I mean, a vacuum cleaner. Well, you can't. A, a vacuum, <laughs> a vacuum cleaner Hey, you man, we need houses. houses. Exactly. And exactly. people always need their houses clean. clean. You set yep. your own schedule. Yep. You 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 get paid maybe cash. And it, and then if you do such a... And customer service is always important. Very. Shout out to Chick-fil-A. Very. Cause they, they Very. Got, they like, got the impeccable. business model. Yeah, they um, have the business model. And then you clean, say, a house uh, or cut a yard for like $40. Yeah. And they want you to cut it every week. That's one hundred and sixty dollars yep. a month. That's you earned on your own accord. Yep. And then you get four yards a week. You yep. multiply that. Then you start learning about scaling. Then you start learning responsibility. Exactly. About and and, and that's something that I'm not, another thing I wanted to um, touch on. You're uh, we're both uh, dirty thirties. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. What would you say to your younger self? Man, what would I say to my younger self? Um, don't follow the crowd. Like, embrace <laughs> being you. Yeah. Embrace being different. Embrace being unique. Um, like following the crowd will will cause you to lose sight of who you are. Yeah, you know what I mean. If you're trying to stay trending, if you're trying to like fit in here, those who are meant to stand out aren't meant to fit in. Right. You know, so it's like like my mom used to say all the time, like, stop trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. Like, and if you spend yeah, most of your life trying <laughs> to fit a square peg in a round hole, it's never going to fit. And you're going to lose sight on or you will never find out where you fit. Right. You get what I mean? You're not meant to fit in. You're meant to stand out. So embrace it. Right. Like. I was afraid, afraid to embrace my differences. Mm -hmm. um, I was very good at art, bro. Like, I was very good at art. And although, like, in school I was kind of known for that, it was like, okay, I can stick to art and just be kind of over here by myself, right, an outcast, right. just known for doing it. Or, like, I could try to play football or I could try to be in with the in crowd and, like, be popular. Right. I value being popular over I couldn't see the forest for the trees. Right, right. You know, right. like popular was the thing now, but like how I look, like, dude, do you know how great I would be if I had of, you know, spent the last 11, 12 years mm -hmm. dedicating my life to what I had dedicated 18 years of my life to? Like I dedicated from I think I started like drawing in like right, kindergarten. Right, right. And I dedicated, like, my 12 years of school to art. And if I had a, if I had a main, maintain that dedication up until now, it would have, you know, it would have right. gotten me somewhere. But so I would tell, you know, a younger version of me, like, don't try to fit in. Like, be comfortable in your own skin. Stay in your own lane. Stay true to who you are and don't lose sight of who you are but embrace who you are embrace your difference and and love your difference uh because at the end of the day god only made one you exactly you know exactly. if yeah. if he needed another yeah, joe or sam yeah, yeah, yeah. like he would have made duplicates right, right right but like you're made in originality so embrace being a, a, a original like stop trying to be a carbon copy of somebody else and that's that's real deep, man. That and especially, I feel that here, uh, if you're trying to make yourself something here in East Texas, yep. it's hard, man. But it, hey. it's, hard. It, it's like so. So the people that uh, are going to listen to this or are listening to this on live 
and and on Marcus's feed on Yeah, my, definitely. Thank y'all for tuning in. Uh, I don't know if y'all have this problem. I mean, like, because Tyler's about 100,000, and East Texas is about roughly about 1.5 million people. Yep. But we're spread out. And everything comes to East Texas kind of late. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Culture. Yeah. Man, I got them Jays, but they've been having them in, in Oak Cliff since yeah. like, way yeah. before, you know. But you have to, and that's something that I, I'm going to touch on here. Yeah, It's understanding your demographic Graphic. Yeah. of what you business that you're in. But you have to understand your region. And here in Tyler, um, most people that come to the innovation pipeline, they're blown away. They don't yeah. even realize that these things exist. Um, uh, Nipsey Hustle, yeah, definitely had his uh, Vector ninety workspace because he 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 had it. He's like, yeah. if I get creative people together, what can we come up with? You know yeah. what I mean? And hey, and I'm this. I think you know while we're sitting here in this platform, like I want to kind of touch on that topic for for a second. So, you know, I think everybody seen you know Nipsey Hustle and and the tragic death of of a very great young man. I say young exactly. man. I'm 30. He was 33. Right. You know, Damn when man. he died, Jesus, bro. Exactly. Yeah, you know, yeah, and bro. I'm not, like, don't get it twisted. Like, I'm not trying to compare myself to him, but I want to, I want to just want, kind of want to share, like, how I got to this point. Like, I didn't have a Tupac in my generation. Right. Like, I didn't have, um, I didn't get the two endow the greatness right. of of Tupac. So yeah, yeah, I kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. came in, right, be right, right. born in 89, I kind of came in on like the tail end. I was probably like six years old when he died, right, you know? Right, right. So I didn't get I didn't get to feel what Biggie meant to African-American yeah, yeah, people, yeah. you know, across the country. I didn't get that. But when I seen Nipsey, right? Right. And I seen, and I had been listening to his music, uh, you know, for probably about a year or two before right, he died. Right, right. But I wasn't big into YouTube, so I, I wasn't like following the Vlad, the, the interviews on Vlad and different. Was he on Vlad TV? I, yeah, yeah. Was he? Yeah, I want to oh. say so. Yeah. So like, I didn't follow his. You know what I'm saying? Follow you know his interviews and stuff like that. So like. Aside from the music, I pushed the music aside. And and what I saw was a person that if you seen, like if you bumped into him in public, you know, gang banger, face tats, like tatted up, you know, right, from right, head right, to right, toe, right. like, you know, all of this negative that you could pull from the outside. But when you seen this man's body of work. It spoke for itself. Like, bro, I grew up in a church. Yeah. Where all they do is judge your <laughs> judge you off of how you look. You yeah. get what I'm saying? Like this person dressed like this, or this person acts like this, or this person is affiliated with this. Right. And they just like condemn you. Right. But I also grew up in the same church, bro, that these same people who were judging you mm-hmm. aren't out the church aren't out doing nothing. No. You get what I'm saying? They're not trying to help their community. Misery they're not company, trying to man. give back. Misery you know what I'm saying? They just sitting company. in church thinking that they're better than you because they're in church. Well, I'm already at a place in my life at this time where I'm on the ropes right. with with and with Christianity. I'm on the ropes with religion. And and I see this young man, you know, during his during his passing. And he was different, you know. He was different. And I'm seeing, like, it doesn't matter how you look or yeah. how people perceive you. Right. But let your body of work speak for you. Yeah. So what I seen was, like, here goes somebody who, if you seen him, mm-hmm. you would write him off. No, sure, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, my, my, definitely. My. So, like, if you seen him, you would write him off. Right, right, right. But when you look over his body of work, bro, mm-hmm. he inspired me. Uh, that, me that, bro, yeah, like, yeah. like, don't let your skin color deter you. Don't let where you come from deter you. Don't let what you were affiliated with deter you. 
like you set your own foundation. You set your own you set your own standard. Metric. You set your own metric for success. Right. And and like that way nobody, yeah, you I'm know, this, forget man. the middleman. Right. Forget the middleman. Like you don't need a middleman. You need you, your team, and your belief in what it is that you're trying to do. And like when I seen him, Church. when I seen him like that, bro, it it lit a fire in me. Because, bro, I had been so afraid of what church people going to think. What are these people going to think? Like, do I look like a person who could own their own business? How will I even be taken? What does a business owner look? Yeah, what does a business owner look like? But when I seen (laughs) Nipsey, I was like, that's what a business owner looks like. Right. Like, I was like, I have no excuse. Like, if this dude right here can do it if this dude right here can make it with I already know what they say about him bro when he died most of church people were like oh he was he was a gangbanger though like and you know what I told him like what better way to change gang culture than to be in gang culture right and like I told I, I had church people come to me like hey why are you why are you glorifying this guy and I'm like Dude, he's doing what you can't do. Like, he has a reach that you don't have. You never have. Like, you can't roll in the rolling 60s Crips right. waving a Bible. You get what I'm saying? Right, like, right. if you ain't down with the set, you don't have the power to change that culture. Right. So I seen a guy who was able to change his, a culture, uh, influence. his influence, <clears throat> to change a culture within his reach that had, this culture had been bred since, like, the 60s, bro. Yeah. The 60s. And and now, do you know that, like, Crips and Bloods, and I'm not going, I don't want anybody to think that I'm glorifying gang culture. Gang culture. Yeah. That's not what I'm doing. But what I'm saying is anything can be changed into a positive with, right. with, the, with the right attitude. Right. Do you know that now, like, they have, I think you probably seen with Mike, uh, Money Mike. I mean, what's his killer Mike? Mm-hmm. He went into, he went there and helped them get uh, incorporated. Right. The Crips and the Bloods. Now they got their own like clothing. They got yeah, their own sodas and everything. They went, legit. Yeah, they went legit. So, so yeah, there are a co- couple of rogue right, few right. who are out still shooting and killing each other. But for the most part, bro, they are turning the whole thing around right. and becoming businessmen right. in the middle of the hood. Right. So like, Line don't hood, exactly block, block, don't block, tell block, block. me what you can't do because of how you look. Right. Or where you come from. That's an excuse. That's an excuse. And, and he Nipsey yeah. took that excuse away from me. Right. I mean, he. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can't. I couldn't have said it better myself. Um, I. Uh, and that one hurt. When oh, it, bro, and, bro, and, and, and her, big and, time. And and I, I was going to uh, go watch him in Dallas. Uh, I had some other things uh, come up. But I, I kind of like, so uh, Nipsey, um, his his father was from, uh, he was in, uh, from. Uh, Eritrea. Eritrea, yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm Mexican, and you can see this gentleman right here. Yeah, definitely. So I, uh, so. From a little bit on me, um, so I'm doing this podcast. Uh, I love intellectual, deep, educational, weird things. And when I saw Marcus doing his thing, I was like, okay, I want to take my knowledge that I've garnered over years and years of oil and gas and, and just mainly oil and gas, but in the corporate and then digitize it, uh, take this creative mind. Um, uh, uh, was it five five percent are creators? Yeah, ten percent are doers. Yep, and eighty five percent are followers. Yep. Me and Marcus are in the five yep. percent. Now that's in terms of creativity. When you hear the one percent, that's the people that like own things. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, like big big time. And I I don't mean to cut you no, off, no, go ahead, go ahead. but I live by that. Like the one percent is Elon Musk. Yeah, you know what I'm saying that's the one percent. Elon Musk. He's not just sitting back, like, because what we can end up doing right. as the 5% who who are not trying to live off of the followers. No. See, the, the, 
the 15 or 30 percent is trying to live and control the followers. Right. We where we end up is a unique place. Yeah. Because we're not in the one percent or the ones who's changing the whole narrative. What we can end up doing is sitting back like, ah ha ha, look at y'all, y'all are right, followers, right, right, y'all are right, being right. controlled by by this, this, and this. What we have to do is get to a point to where we're like Elon Musk. Right. And we're trying to change the narrative. Like, what's the new business model? You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like I think that that if we're sitting here preaching how employees are mistreated, taken advantage of, like how can we create a whole new business culture or or employee business relationship yeah. structure? Right, like right, right. that's where the 1% is. You know, the 1% is saying that, hey, I see a problem and I'm not just going to sit outside the problem yeah. and watch the problem You're from a solution. safe place. I'm gonna I'm gonna be the solution. You'll find a solution. Yeah, you'll be the solution. I'm right. gonna be the solution. So yeah, man, like I I live and breathe that rule. Like you know, and and it's it's about you know creating the balance, bro. Um, when I when, you know I started following consciousness and trying to find myself, get deeper involved with who I am, why I'm why I am the way that I am. Sometimes you can find yourself in a place where you're so woke you're asleep. And oh man, that let me. Uh, how how do you think you can apply that to being conscious? So so let me let me because uh, I gotta get I gotta be one hundred here. Yeah. Um, I was uh, I was blind for a really well I for I say up until about twelve, mm -hmm. and I had an enlightening moment that I didn't know what that moment was yeah. until years later. So. If you're sitting in in if you if you feel like you, you there's more to your life, yeah. If you feel like you're sitting there at John Tyler and Robert E. Lee, TJC, and you're like, man, I want to do this, man. I own exactly these, these cats. They ain't doing nothing, man. They trying to do the same thing, mess around with the same chicks. I, I don't want to work at Sonic. I don't want to. Then don't, don't. Yeah. They might call you a square. They might call you whatever. You know what I mean. But then 10 years from that moment that you have in awakening, your, your soul, God, something, whoever you pray to, to exactly. it, it, it's like trying to pull you like, man, God, or Allah, why? Like, I gave you a good woman. You messed it up. I gave yep. you an opportunity. You messed, messed it, up. it up. Sometimes you have to cleanse yourself. <laughs> you got to purge, bad, bro. Purge you gotta purge of all these bad spirits, <clears throat> of all these bad omens of your yep. surroundings. Now, I'll go back to uh, Rose City, uh, my, my hometown, Tyler, Texas. It's uh, it's right now. It's in the nexus of greatness. Next decade, Tyler's about mm -hmm. to blow up in real estate. We already got banks, you know what I mean. But real estate and banking go hand in hand. But as an individual, we live in a very interesting area. If you want to do stuff, you can go to Dallas. You can yep. go party, but it's cost of living is higher. Mm -hmm. If you have bad anxiety, my woman's got bad anxiety, and she ain't even seen the traffic yet. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying. I, I bro, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm the same way. But and and it's funny that you touch on that. You know, I'm not originally from Tyler, right? And just you know, coming to Tyler, um, it was different. Right, you know, right, it, right. I, I've lived in Longview, man. I live in Bossier City. I've I've had the the, you know, the ability to travel you know, throughout my life, living in a lot of different places. But Tyler is is on the map. Like, it's it's slowly progressing that way because right. I don't think that change can be stopped. Change no, has no, to happen, it, you know? It's not, uh, it, it's like, um, it's kind of like Dubai in reverse. Yeah. So Dubai yeah. in 1989 <clears throat> was a, a speck of dust. Yeah, yeah. And in 30 years, boom, yeah. right? I think Tyler... Has been slowly like this, like this, um, like a dam that's got this pressure, and then they yeah. open up the valves and let the water exactly. out. And, exactly, and I think that's what I think that's what Tyler is is becoming. Uh, we have our own issues. Uh, mm -hmm. The city is still segregated. I mean, visibly segregated. Mm -hmm. But in terms of business, yeah. if you want to open up. Uh, 
an air duct and air solution business, if you want a, uh, a creative services boutique, if you want to be whatever, yeah. Tyler is a good place to start and expand. Now, in terms of maybe having a corporate HQ, that's up to you and how you run your business. Exactly. But there is so much money out here. Um, East Texas was built on oil yep. and timber. And it's a good market. It it's, is. It's, it's, it's definitely a good market. Now we have three colleges, Texas College, to Tyler, and TJC. We yep. have a ton of banks. So if you need financing, yep. It, yep. You, you, I mean, hey. Um, and then we have uh, a, a decent um, – we have burgeoning um, – uh, uh, communities, yep. you have a lot, you're starting to see a lot more people that look like me and Marcus mm -hmm. doing some things, and that resonates with you, you, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter where you are, you're like, you know what? Like, uh, I, I was gonna, I'm gonna touch base on what you do, but, so I see a lot of people uh, following uh, the leader, or, you know, playing, uh, Follow the leader. Follow yeah. the leader. No, no, no. Uh, I forgot the game. A duck, duck, goose. The goose, yeah. Or uh, musical chairs. Chairs, or something like yeah. That. So a lot of people, y'all want to ride this wave. Like So with ladies, um, you have the ones that, you know, oh, I'm going to open up a tanning salon. Yep. Or I want to do lashes. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to da, da. And it just, like, becomes redundant. redundant. And, and yeah. I'm like, okay, if you're going to be an eyelash lady, be the, the best. Yeah, be the. Or be like, be known <clears throat> as like, man, I need my lashes done. I'm not saying I need them, you know what I'm saying? But uh, be, surround yourself with everything that like, you can do. And, and I'm going to show you about business, bro. And I try to, I have this conversation and no knock to anybody. Like, you know, if, if that's what you want to do and that's where your passion is, only you know that. Right. Like, no and I can it, tell you. If you're doing it just because somebody else is doing it and you say, here, you know, I just want to do this too, then only you know that. But this is what I want to kind of let you know, that what you're going to find is at the end of that road, if you're following somebody else, traffic is going to get so congested that you're not going to be, going to be able to move. No. Like, everybody cannot get down the same one-lane highway. Right. Like, eventually... It's going to get so congested that the people who are at the front are going to get to where they need to be long before you. Right. And whatever is at the end of that road is going to be consumed before you get there. So, like, watch out for traffic congestion yeah. when you're trying to start a business. <laughs> like, the path with least resistance bears the most fruit. Right. Because everybody isn't picking off the tree. Yes. So if you want to be in something that's successful, find your moat. Find out where the hair industry isn't doing well. And, and Find yeah. out where the fashion industry it has a hole, has a gap, has a separation. Like, And that's where you need to be. Because if everybody is swimming away then that's your lane. Like, that's your pocket. Find out what the fashion industry, the nursing industry, the medical industry, the pharmaceutical industry, find out what holes they're leaving. Find out where they're not doing the customer, giving them the best product, the best return on their investment. Yeah. Oh, uh. and, and stay right there. Stay right there. Like, don't follow all the money because if you're a small fish... It's only a few things that's going to happen if you're a small fish following big fish. The big fish is going to eat all the food, yeah. and then they're going to turn on you. Yeah. Or you're not going to get anything. You get what I'm saying? You're get the like, Exactly, because, like, <laughs> this is the thing. Uh -huh. Bro, I'm a small fish right. in a big pond right. with a lot bigger fish. Yes. If I try to get over there with these bigger fish, one, I can't out eat them. No. And the stuff that they're eating is bigger than I am. Right. And when they've eaten their what they're gonna eat, and ain't nothing left, it's either two things. I hope that they're full yeah. off of their feast. Yeah. Or now they're gonna turn and try to eat me. So you have to yeah, learn. Y'all yeah, yeah, listen, y'all, yeah, y'all hear this? Like yeah, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm this? gonna tell you something about a fish, right? Right. 
fish can be so greedy yeah. that they will eat a fish Even it's bigger than that's themselves. bigger than it and kill itself. Right, right. So Catfish, if yeah, I'm in a pond right. with bigger fish, right, mm-hmm. you got and these and these fish coherently want to eat a, a meal, right? They're probably feeding on fish that are bigger than I am. Yes. So if I'm in the mix, I'm food. But yep. guess what? If the bigger fish are chasing fish relatively the same size as them, why can't I just eat all the minnows? Right. Like, why am I chasing a bigger fish? Don't lose sight yeah. of what... Don't don't lose sight. So if... I mean, because I have to speak on things as where people are, and uh, and this is taking me to yeah. uh, my next question. But... um, So, he's an, indu- an, an industrial type of industry, and I'm very... Thorough, I can be applied to whatever it is that if you want to bring an idea and any digital content, you know. But uh you it, it, it I, I was laughing earlier because so many people lose sight so uh of what they're wanting to do. They have no realistic goals. Hey bro, you have to be very realistic. And uh very. So, so like I, I uh there's a lady that uh wanted to do lashes and I told her, um uh, my woman, hey, you know she'll be your model. So this is just kind of like a little off, a uh, little tangent. Ladies, if you are doing makeup and if you are doing eyelashes, hair extensions, why are you gonna charge the model to promote your product to be a brand ambassador? Don't do that, man. You have to, if if you think you already know everything from even before you even file actual. Paperwork. You have you're nothing going to learn. To fail. Yeah, you have nothing to learn. Out the gate. Yeah. You have to humble yourself. <clears throat> I want billions of that. I I'm hell bent. I'm obsessed with pyramids. I I eat shit and breathe. I'm here every day at the pipeline. I'm reading. I'm people around with Marcus, my woman, uh, CJ, just people that are uh, want it. Yeah, and and I think you just said the word, bro. You have to be a student. First. Right. Like, and you have to, like, to continue to grow, you have to continue to have the student mindset. Yes. Like, once again, I'm a small fish. Right. But if I just sit back and become a student of how the bigger fish navigate. Yes. And the moves Study that they, they they got to be big fish for a reason. Right. You get what I'm how saying? Did they, get there? they didn't get to become big fish. <laughs> Running in the pack and getting eaten. No. You know, at once there were small fish. They say, hey, you know, I'm going to stay away from the big fish. I'm going to eat my field over here of the minnows. And when I get bigger, then, and that's why I'm always telling you, you ask me how do I want to grow. And I always say organically, organically, organically. Because I could run, I could bull rush over here, take a lot of jobs that I can't even do, and they break me. Right. And then I'm over before I even get started. Yeah. So what I do is I, f- I stay in my lane. You ask me all the time, like, hey, bro, do you want to get in commercial? What I tell you, I'm not ready yet. Yeah. I'm not ready yet. Because you know what? Unless I have fifty or $60,000 in the bank to wait 45 days for a paycheck, I'm going to go broke doing those jobs. Right, 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 you know right. what I'm saying? A commercial job could take me, let's say I get a clinic, right, right? or a small hospital. And I just say, oh, I'm going to go in here and take my little equipment and do the best that I can do. And they like, you got to be over here for a month. Well, that's a month that I got to pay to be there out of my pocket. Right. That's a month that I don't have a surplus of money built up to be at a hospital for a month. And right, guess right, what? Right. When I'm done, they're laughing because they're like, oh, yeah, 45 days before you get paid. Mm. So I went in the hole. You get what I'm saying? Right, right, right. I went in a hole Not because sure. you know what I saw? A fifty thousand dollar payday. Right, right, right. But I didn't know I was gonna have to spend seventy five thousand to make fifty thousand. Right, right. And then after that, I still gotta operate on now absolutely no funds. No. You get what I'm saying? And, and, and I think a lot of people. So, uh, before we get into what Marcus does and and kind of what I do. Uh, 
I think that's why I call this the gold standard. You have to have a standard. So if you're wanting to do, um, on my YouTube channel, I've interviewed a ton of local artists. A lot of y'all don't really know what y'all are doing, and y'all don't take advice very well because you think that you've already done it. If Marcus here books a gig and he doesn't have his vacuum cleaner, how's he going to do the job? Exactly. So, or, or if you're not prepared, are you prepared to do a million dollar job? Are you prepared to do a a mixtape with somebody that's already got their business acumen down? And that's a thing that a lot of people uh don't have. Y'all not disciplined. Y'all not. Y'all don't have a standard to go. So if you want to emulate um people that are scammers, or finessers, that's you. Yeah. For one, you might end up in jail. Someone might kill you because you robbed them out of money and people don't play about money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. And another thing is you won't be legitimate because only it takes one bad review from somebody prominent and you're done. And you're out of town. You have to go into another industry. So before you even begin to say, I want to do eyelashes, do your research. Exactly. Be As Marcus said, be a student of the be game. Be thorough, man. You what, what is so hard, hard. about... Oh, you! Oh, I want to be! I want to be an Instagram model too. Sure, but you might have a big booty. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say this, bro. I think a lot of people are students of what they want to do, and they just don't know how to execute. You think? And it's not even that. They're students of. I want to make tennis shoes. They will spend hours and hours on how to make this tennis shoe. Right. And then they say, wow, I made a tennis shoe. Now I want to create a business. Okay. Well, you know what? They focus so much on making this great tennis shoe mm-hmm. that they've exhausted themselves by the time is now learning how to market this tennis shoe, brand this tennis shoe you know, build a business around this tennis shoe. Like, the the lessons don't stop. Right. Well, what they do is they say, I got a good product. Now why ain't nobody buying it? Where you didn't do your marketing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's levels, bro. Yeah, it's yeah. levels to this. And y'all always laugh <clears throat> at uh, these MLMs, multi-level marketing schemes. But I don't know if you realize, like, if you work at, I used McDonald's earlier, you're the cashier. Yep. You take the payment. Mm-hmm. Then it goes, who who provided the software? Who provided the the yep. monitors? There's levels. To There's more multi level marketing, marketing and management every, in every, everything. Right, right. I think I was showing you that yesterday. Right, right. As right. much as you would say, like, I don't want to do multi. I don't want to be a part of multi level marketing. Well, if you're it. gonna run a business, like you have to be, you know, somewhat involved in some type of multi-level, you know, marketing. Right. So the the thing that I would tell anybody, and this is just information, like go if you're young, right? Let's just start with the young. If you're young, right out of school, and you want to be an entrepreneur, go to college, learn business. Go yes. to college, learn economics. Master P. Go to college, college exactly. Yeah. Go to college, learn marketing. You know, learn the business around the business. Like, I'll tell you when I started. And and I don't want to, you know, belabor the time. And I know we got some followers, man. I thank y'all for tuning in and uh, listening. But I'm going to tell you, like, I've never took, I don't think, one business course. Right. Like I might had a course and like for one day we talked about business structure. Yes. I think I had like one economic class right, right, right. in in ninth grade. Right. I was six or seven years old and I would always ask my dad and, and my grandfather for money. Mm-hmm. And they'd be like, they would make a joke. Like you can go get a rake and rake somebody's yard. Well, they would come home from work and they looking for me everywhere, bro. Like they they looking around, looking around, where where is he at? Right. Well, I'm up the street bagging and raking leaves. Right. So the next day, my dad would be like, is that what you really want to do? I'm like, yeah. Trying to get this money. So, of course, what I would do, I'm a kid. I'll start raking your yard. My buddies come by on their bikes, and I'm like, 
throw the rake down. You know, and my grandfather would be like, it would be seven o'clock at night. He was like, uh, the neighbor just told me that they hired you to or paid you to rake your leaves right. and you didn't finish. Seven o'clock at night, the sun is down. Mm -hmm. My grandfather or my or my dad would walk me back up the street and rake those people and finish raking those people's yard at seven o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. Well, what did I learn from that? It's finish what you started, started and right. put your priorities first. Right. You right. know, work now. See it through. Play later. Yeah, see it, see it through. Right, right. So then what did I also learn? Okay, I'm going to give you a service yeah. that I get paid for. Right. So what did I what did I what did I also learn? Who was watching me rake those yards? The next door neighbor. Yeah. And the next door neighbor. Right, 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 right. So I learned by knocking on doors. Hey, can I cut your grass for five dollars? Hey, can I cut your grass for ten dollars? So when I finally got a real job, found out how payroll worked, found out how taxes work, right, right, then right. I would pay attention to commercials. Watch how commercials market, Interact. advertise, right. look how they you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So by I'm learning all the way up to now, you know, from six or seven, like when I could have just went to school for four years, got a degree in business, I learned mine the hard way from working for this company. Oh, this company messed up and they did this wrong right. or they managed this right, wrong. Right, right. Like, and so I learned the hard way. If I could tell somebody come out of college, right? I mean, coming out of high school right now, What's the easiest way to start your own business? Go to school and learn business. Right. Right, right. Work, when you get out, work under a business. Right. And and find out what your passion is. Because the thing is, the worst thing to be in business and do is forget why you do what you do. Don't lose sight of what you're Exactly. Going. If, you're, if Don't, you're only in it for... For, for the, money. You're not you, going to... You're, you're not going to succeed. If, if you want... If you want the lifestyle of the rappers or these celebrities, y'all have to understand someone's still paying their bills. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I know this might sound crazy because we're about to wrap this up. We're going to just hit on kind of what Marcus does. Some of the wealthiest people, Jay-Z, Jay-Z's now got a billion-dollar net worth. There are still people that pay his bills. Now, keep mm -hmm. that in mind. Just, just think about this. It takes 31 and a half years to count to a billion, so a difference from a million to a billion, even though it's just an extra zero. 31 and a half years nonstop. So if I started one, two, three, yep. 31 years, a billion dollars is a lot of fudging money. But there are people that still pay. Uh, uh, there's a joke that uh, Chris Rock said. Shout out to Chris Rock. Chris yeah, Rock. yeah, definitely. He said that if Bill Gates woke up one day with Oprah money, Oprah's worth almost $5 billion, Bill would jump out of a window. No, yeah. Think about this. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, think about it. So don't lose sight of it. So if you get a hundred dollars that day, that's a hundred dollars that you didn't have. Yeah, yeah. If you had, if you, if your gig is not doing well, learn how to save, budget, yeah. be yeah. disciplined, be like on my neck says, be uh, got to show by, got to show by Ted right quick, got to be focused, man. And that laser is beam focused. Right, right, right. Like this is, I think me and you were talking about, you know, where I'm at right now. Right. So starting a business in the fourth quarter. You know, I'm calling all my buddies, kind of like, I wouldn't even say panicking, but I'm like, hey, hey, man, what, how are things shaking over there? I'm checking the temperature. Right, you know right, what I'm right. saying? I'm checking the temperature of business. That's another thing you can't be afraid to do. Like, you have to keep up with the temperature and the climate of the econo of, of the economics where you live. Right. So so I call my buddies, like, what's the temperature right now? Right. What, what's the thing? Oh, well, it's kind of, you know, like, I'm established and it's slow. So if I'm newly established, I know it's slow. Right. So so it's like, okay, I don't have a fever. Everybody in the house is kind of <laughs> sick right now. Yeah, you get yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, it ain't yeah. just me. No. So it's like, I, I ain't stressing out. But what am I, tell the people what I'm doing every day when I'm not working. You're right here. You're Okay, so for the people that don't know, uh, and oh, uh, uh, by the way, uh, I didn't tell you this. This uh, podcast is uh, sponsored by ARX Professional Air Duct Clean. Cleaning and Air Solutions. So for all your air duct needs, holler at my boy Marcus. Yes, but uh, you're an animal, man. You you you're you're entrenched. You're entrenched. We are entrenched in our in our in our hustles. Exactly. And and, and I don't take no days off. If if uh, 
even though uh, I love Steve Jobs, he, he's kind of somebody that I look up to. He was an asshole. He, but he pushed the, uh, he said, I need the iPhone. Uh, I can't remember exactly the story, but he needed his product. And, oh, and the engineers told him, oh, we'll do it in a year. You have Mm-mm. 30 days. Yeah, yeah. So that's the kind of mentality that me and Marcus have is I want the results. Uh, am I going to make a billion dollars in one day? No. Yeah. A- am I going to make $100,000 in one day? No. But in order to make a billion dollars, I gotta have a trillionaire hey, type bro, of hustle. Man, I my my mom called me earlier and she was like, Hey, what are you doing? And like, it's been slow, so she's, you know, I'm her son, so she's stressing out. Right, know? right, right. Shout oh, out you to know, mom. yeah, yeah, definitely. Shout out to her. She's like, What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? And I'm just like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't, don't, don't call me to stress me out. Right. Like I'm not freaking out. Right, right. You right. know. The thing that I know I'm going to do is I'm going to operate in consistent action every day You're because positive. exactly because I'm going to con- I'm going to operate in consistent action because something is going to happen from it. You get what I'm saying? Right. Like if I keep plugging at this, eventually it's going to open up. So this is what I told her. I said, "Look, don't stress out for me if I'm not stressing out." What I need you to do instead of, hey, are, are, are you going to make it this month? Are you going to be able to pay all of this? Are you going to be able to do all of that? Like mothers do. I, I'm pretty sure. That's any, that's uh, yeah, mom, and as any right? mom, like, are you going to be able to pay your bills this month? You know what I told her? If you want to make sure I'm going to pay my bills, then you need to get to passing out business cards. Helping you. Helping like, you don't tell job. me to, oh, you know, you just started a business. Eh, you know, it's looking and, and shaky. I think, I, I think, go find a regular job. I, I, no, I think you go can't p- run from that. Man. Exactly. I mean, okay. For, so, uh, so any the boogeyman gonna get you. Right. You're gonna have. You're not gonna be able to sell lashes every month. Every you're not month. Be able to no sell burgers. Every. It's it's gonna be inconsistent time yeah. periods. But then, a uh, little golden nugget. Don't give up. That is when you learn what you are made, made of. Made of. And I'm a data guy. I love math. I love numbers. Look at what did what didn't do well. Why did I not, not. understand the the? Because it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, creative service boutique, uh, air duct cleaning. If you flip burgers, uh, uh, or if you have a food truck and you're looking at your numbers, okay, this is where I need to improve on this, this, and this. Never stop grinding for yourself as an entrepreneur. You can't always man. learn. And 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 uh, we're about to wrap up, but. What you digest on a daily basis is what you become. Exactly. So if you're gonna it's what eat you become. greasy, shitty food, yep. you might have a heart attack. If you if you uh, read things that are by people that have PhDs and not necessarily just yep. PhDs, but in philosophy, you got to change what's uh, in your box. Uh, uh, if, if you listen to Eric Thomas, Inky Johnson, if you listen to Fles Brown, uh, the Tony Tim Robbins, Tony Robbins of the world, Tony Robbins, yep. it, it, it doesn't matter. It's a positive thing. Yeah, definitely. Um, Last, uh, last man before we wrap it up, uh, what is um, what what uh, what made you get into the HVAC? HVAC. I say HVAC. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, HVAC. What yeah. was it that uh, talk about that a little bit? What was it that made you choose this industry? Um, and man, what, and what do you? Hey, do? it ain't no. It's, it wasn't like I, I could say. It was weird. Like it wasn't long or thought out, bro. Right. Like, I was working at a dealership. Right. And I had just got out the hospital, like, from having a, uh, I, I had a stroke. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. And a mild heart, and like a slight mild heart attack, however you want to put uh, it. A cardiac infract- infraction. 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 Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, first ambulance ride in my, my whole life. And you like, got, I was you got freaking out. You were telling me this before. You, yeah, you, like, you, you know. Uh, reassessing your life. I, yeah, I was standing out in the dealership. You know, I, three days after getting out of the hospital, I'm back at this stress hole. You know what I'm saying? I'm back at this stress hole, like, looking for customers, like, oh, That's you know how I'm going. Like, like, what am I going to do? So I seen a school across the street. I'm like, let me walk over here. Right. So I walk in, I talk to this young lady, um, <coughs> and I was skeptical. Right. 
Like the only thing I wanted to take business, right? Yeah. She was like, "Well, you know, we got an okay business program, but you might want to look into the HVAC program." I'm used to wearing suits, you know, cap right. toe wingtip shoes every right, day. Right, right, right. Like, ain't no way I just want to get back into working dirty. with my hands. Yeah, yeah, getting yeah, dirty yeah. again. So I show up, tell you, show you how out of touch I am. I show up the first two days of school in a suit. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> laughing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So eventually. I got to a point where I was like, look, I got to jump. Right. I got to jump. Steve Harvey. And I don't know where I'm going to land. Right. I don't even know if I'm going to fly. Right. But I have to jump. So I went to the temp agency. And and I hope I hope everybody's listening to this story so you know that you can do it too. Yes. Like, I went from making about 65 plus a year. Right. You know, comfortable living for a single man, no kids right, at the right, time. Right, right. You know, that's I didn't have to split that money with nobody. Right. So that was a decent piece of change for me. Right, right, right. So I went from making sixty five plus a year to I quit my job one day. I came to shirt. I came to work in shorts and a t shirt. Packed up my truck and rode and drove off into the sunset and didn't say nothing to nobody. Okay. Like I was just done. Right. right so right. then I was like, you know, I gotta survive though. Right. I went to a temp agency. The lady was like, wow, your resume is so great. I don't have any jobs for you. I just got this nine-hour job, pressure washing radiators. I walked out the front door in tears. Right. And I walked out the door in tears because I was fighting with my pride. Right, 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 right. And I went back in, you know, tears running down my face, and I told a woman I need it, knowing that that job couldn't even pay half of my bill. Right. It might pay a third of my bills. Right. And, and I took the job. And the lady told me, she said, hey, look, go and um, go work the job. And then, you know, when something opens up, I promise you, I'll pull you from there. Right, right, well, right. if you've worked for a temp service before, yeah, their obligation ain't to you. No. It's to the company that they're getting, you know, pull, that they're yeah, yeah, yeah. pulling people for. Right, right, so right. in my mind, I'm like, I'm stuck here. Right. What am I going to do? Right. Like, I haven't, because I had prior experience being a, a mechanic and technician right, and stuff right, like right, that. Right, right. But it's a seven-year, um, five or six-year gap. So, basically, in in employer's eyes, I have no experience. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like, well, I don't need a sales guy. But I'm like, you know, five or six years ago, you know, I graduated from school, working on 18 wheelers and stuff like that. No, we don't care. For the last five years, this is what you've done. Mm. So the lady showed up one day, and I'm thinking, I'm doomed. She was like, I got a better job for you. Get out of here. Don't talk to nobody. Just hop in your truck and leave. Okay. I'm like, wow. Got a job working for an oil field warehouse company. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. You know, I'm, I'm still going to school. Right. Now I'm working 60 hours a week and going to school full time. That's rough. Full time. And trying to, you know, manage and have a life in, in, in the midst of it. Right. Didn't think I was going to make it. Graduated with a 3.73 GPA. You know what I'm saying? Graduated uh, National Honor Society. Okay. So, like, I excelled through the adversity, and I didn't lose anything. Yeah, I downgraded. I went from a three-bedroom, two-car right, garage right, right. house to a one-bedroom apartment. Right, right. But I understand there was a greater purpose. Right. Fell in love with HVAC, bro. Okay. Like, I embraced it. Right, right. I embraced it. Well, it still hit adversity. They was like, well, you get out of here. Some, like, I know you finished school and we know you've been certified and all of this, but they're only willing to pay you about $12 an hour. So I'm like, so what? Let's roll. Let's go. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, I've, I've, like, I can't, I can't stop. It don't got stop. in, I got in, and crazy. I learned from the car business to negotiate salaries. I learned how to negotiate deals. Right. So I treated asking for a job like a car deal. Right. No, I'm not taking this. Like, I know how you got to get paid because I'm used to being a car salesman making my own paycheck. Right. So I understand how much I'm making you. Right, 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 right. I'm finna negotiate my percentage. Right. So I negotiated myself to better levels in the industry. And my thing would be is what a lot of people don't want to do is I would say, this is what I think I'm worth. If I don't perform, fire me. Yeah. Well, a lot of people don't. It's not that, oh, he's cocky. 
It's I understand how biz, how people see business. Right. If I'm not an asset, then I'm a lie, I'm a liability. liability. But if I show myself to be an asset, then pay me like I'll an asset. If I'm a liability, let me go. Right. That that's that's my sales pitch. Okay, we'll we'll hire you. Like you don't have to question me. I'm not going to an unemployment office. You put me in the street. Yeah. And that's how I work my way up to this point. Is you like, hey, here goes an opportunity. Is it a good opportunity? Is it a bad opportunity? Should I wait? Have I learned enough uh, about this? You know what I'm saying? And I, I I work my way um I work my way up, bro. Um, you know, through the cracks, taking right, right. the jobs and doing the jobs that nobody wanted to do. That's, the, that's you what know, it takes. just just that's to it establish takes. myself as hey, you know, I'm I'm a hard worker. I'm right, an right. honest worker. You know, I'm worth having on your team. Right, right, right. You showed but, your worth exactly. But I knew in school that I didn't want to work for nobody for nobody else. Right, right. And, and my instructor told me, he said, in four years, you're not going to be working for nobody. I'm just like, how? I don't, I don't see it. Like, I yeah, think yeah. I'm a probably. He was like, you got it. Right, right. You have the, you have the hustle, man. They was yeah. like, you got it. You have the hustle. Um, <clears throat> so is that that was the the seed that you had planted? Yeah. And then yeah. where did um, RRX get watered? Yeah. Um, necessity is the mother of invention. Right. You know, I had my daughter. Um, money was getting tighter right. and tighter. Um, and I was just like, either I can start begging for going in the office every day and begging for more money, and or I can just say I'm not begging nobody for for an opportunity. I'm gonna control my own destiny. Right. Just like you said, it was like, no, I'm not gonna go in this office and beg for a raise every day. Right. I'm I'm gonna save my money. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna wait till the time is right. I'm gonna wait for for the door to open up to do my own thing. Right. And you know, one of my biggest supporters, you know, I got him on my hat. Man, gave me a shot. Dude, found me in a parking lot and was like, "Hey, man, I want you to come work for us. You know, you seem like a great guy. I think you could build our team." And man, it bloomed into a plot into a, a great relationship. Right. And, and a business partnership. Right, right. And then, you know, we kind of sat down and I was just like, hey, man, I got this idea. Since, you know, since you guys believe in me so much, I got this idea. I want, I've been wanting to start my own duck, com duck cleaning company for the last year. And I was like, you know, I'm already taking a risk because the average company, you start talking about your own business, they'll fire you. Right. Like on the spot. Right. Like you finna do what? You get out of here. That's what you can do. And they were like, I was like, hey, look, I think down the road it would be good for both of us. Mm -hmm. And they were like, you know what? I think you're right. And, uh, man, they embraced it. Right. They embraced it. And the year before I tried to start this business, didn't have the credit, didn't have the money, uh, couldn't find the investor, um, just hit roadblock after roadblock right, right, after right, roadblock. Right. And you're going to. Yeah. Going to. And so at first, you know, at the beginning of the year, you know, toward the end of the year, I was like, I think I'm gonna, I want to buy a house. Um, and it was like, you know, who says that? Because I felt like I needed to have a house before I started a business. Like, what does it look like me having a business and don't even own a house? And then I got to looking at the story of Jeff Bezos. Like, who says that? Who says that you have to have a house to run a yeah, business? Right, right. You know what I'm saying. So I threw that out of the window. Yeah. Mind you, I'm breaking down all these boxes that people put people in, yeah. and I'm just their like level their level of understanding. And I'm like, yeah, the yeah. smartest way to start a, a business is to rent somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you're not financially obligated to somewhere. If I had to go move to the Motel Six and start my business, I would have. Right. You know, if it was cheaper. But cost effective. Cost effective. Um, and I and I think because my business at the end of the day is my it's gonna be my legacy. Right, right, right. So man, you know, I partnered with, with Simmons and man, they helped me out and you know, we're we're kinda where we are today, you know, trying to you know, trying to make this dream, you know, come to life. And right, right, right. and and it's like it's it's literally like living a dream, man. Right, right, right. Um, that does it have its ups and downs? Is it is it having its down? You know, I'm transparent. Um, I'm we're doing good, but it's fourth quarter. People are closing out the year, and I started in the worst month of the year. 
but uh, I think it was the best time for me to start you know because I know what I'm made of because, you know, it's, it's easy to jump on something when it's good, it's booming, it's jumping, and then what happens is when it, when it slows down, you're out. That kind of happened to me in the car business. I came in the car business when, when salesmen were still had the bad rap of knocking people head off. Right. You know, now they don't make so much money, but when I first came in, bro, I had never got a ten thousand dollar check for, for you know, and this might sound crazy, but I had never got a ten thousand dollar check for a month of work. Ever, never even dreamed of. Right, right, you know what right, I'm saying? Right. You gotta keep but, dreaming, man. but yeah, but by the time I came out, we came out of the car business. I was on billboards around the city. I had TV I I commercials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had, I had uh, you was that radio dude, commercials. You, had that, you was that dude. And, and bro, that let me know that my dreams can become reality. Right. Like when you riding through the city and then you with your mom, you say, hey, mom, look at that billboard. And it's you. You're like, And it's like, what? Like you're on a billboard? And then like your family members come in like, oh, you got commercials. Yeah, I got, got. But when I walked away from it, I'm riding through the city. Yeah, I knew. Putting, you know. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I knew that that hey, I can walk away from the car business, but what the car business has taught me and the seeds that is planted, can't nobody take away. Right. So Your knowledge, man. You, it's wisdom. yeah. It's wisdom. So wisdom. I'm not there yet, but uh, we're gonna be on billboards. We finna be on commercials, uh, because now I know that those things are attainable. Right. And before growing up in Marshall, Texas, I never thought that those things had my name on them. Right, right, right. But I own them. Right, right. And, and that's something that I, I wanted to do with this podcast is is I'm, I'm a big uh, youth and uh, people of color, you know what I'm saying? Um, especially going into next year. Yeah. Uh, or this decade. Yeah, Because um, uh, I know I kept saying this, but we have so much knowledge between the both of us. Um this is going to be, I want this podcast to be a metric for young entrepreneurs and just a general day of life. If a wife is listening to this and you have kids that are, uh, you have allergies because my son has allergens, yep. food allergens and breathing. Um, a woman does. And y'all don't realize like what you're breathing is, is affecting your life. It's affecting daily your life. life. And this man right here comes in and gives you a free consultation and then you watch him work. His services, you can be at the house, you can be getting some booty in the in the bedroom, and you know, I'm, I'm just kidding. But you can be at home, yeah, definitely. and he can be working, and then you can see what is being vacuumed out out of your air ducts, so you don't have to leave. It's not just gonna, it, it's not a run. And then you, you, I don't know if it's, uh, if it's a couple of days where you notice the difference, but oh, you will notice the difference. Yeah, you know, a lot of customers, if not immediately, over the next few days, notice a difference in uh, quality of life. In, in the quality of life. Right. You know, a lot of it is, um, you know, we're addressing a side of duck cleaning, like the the guy out in the lobby that we were just right, right, talking right. to. This another testament of of what I do. We met a guy in the lobby. And the guy was like, hey, what do you do? You know, well, I, I do duck cleaning and air solutions. He was like, yeah, okay, great. I, so I just asked him a, a couple of questions. I was like, the first question I asked him, like, do you have any rooms that have trouble cooling or get hotter or cooler? Then he was like, absolutely. I said, so how long have you owned your home? He was like, what, 20, 30 years for, for a long time. And he said, I said, so you've seen a lot of technicians. He was like, yeah, I have. He said, I said, how many of those technicians have addressed the issue that you're telling me? No. He said, none of them. I said, how many of them have you told? He was like, just about every one. I said, so I assume that they just come to your house, look at your HVAC unit, and, and you know, hey, just collect their money and walk out and leave. Well, you know, he was like, absolutely. I was like, you know, that's the business I'm in. I'm in the business to do what other people are walking away from. Right, right, right. Um, so y'all, I'm gonna I'm gonna end this on a, on that note. Um, the gold standard is 
is the standard that you want to achieve and and you being a young CEO, young king, young queen, whatever you want to call, call yourself. Call yourself, yeah. Just think positive. Stay positive. Live right. positive. Right. And um, uh, again, this uh, the gold standard of today is sponsored by Air, Air R. Let me let me show y'all on on live. Air RX Professional and uh, Duct Cleaning and Air Solutions. Thank you, Marcus, for coming yes. on, man. Yes, uh, no problem. And, and I'm gonna be having uh, people like him come on. So uh, I got a professor in mathematics uh, next, and I could. That's like porn for me because I, I love math numbers and you got to love what you do. You have to. So have God to. bless everyone out there in America. and uh, Thank y'all yeah, for tuning and, in uh, on, on my Facebook Live, and, man. Uh, appreciate y'all. Y'all uh, check this out. on uh, The links will be on his YouTube channel, my YouTube channel, on Facebook. And uh, y'all going to be seeing a lot more of me and him 2020. And uh, one last thing. Uh, for the ones on live, you have a referral system. Sure do. If you know anybody that is needing their air duct cleaned and you refer a family member, friend, yep. just say that. One, what is what is your referral system? So my referral system for every four hundred dollar for every four hundred dollar duct cleaning, uh, I'm gonna give you fifty dollar gift certificate or fifty dollars cash, whichever you prefer. For every duct cleaning that I sell, where you have a ticket price of between eight hundred to a thousand dollars, I'm gonna give you a hundred dollar gift ticket, certificate or cash, your choice. No questions asked. Um, go to my website, go to the contact list, put that person's name in the contact list in the comments below. Put your name, your address, a phone number, however you want to be contacted. You can also find us on Facebook at RRX Professional Duck Cleaning. Uh, you can go in there, put that person's name, phone number, and then put who referred them. And if we sell that job, I'll be contacting you, letting you know, and we'll have your money uh, in the mail or however you want to receive it. I heard the man, so God bless. I end everything. Well, love, peace, chicken, grease, live. And on on y'all on Marcus's live, uh, Deuce man, and uh, y'all stay uh, tuned for more uh, good content.